very much uh, to the Africa Digital uh, uh, Festival and to you, Foster, for giving me the opportunity to be here today and engage in a discussion and a thematic that I'm very passionate about. Now, oftentimes, when people ask me, what do you do? <laughs> I always respond, I help make people's life better. And obviously, there's always the next question, what do you mean by that? This is what financial inclusion means to me. It means options. It means opportunity. It means journey. Financial inclusion has a different, uh, uh, it means different things to different people. Oftentimes, it sadly is reduced to making financial services available. For me, it's, it goes beyond that. The journey starts with having access to a financial instrument, whether that is a, a bank account, a microfinance account, a mobile money account, but it is an account in your name where you can secure what you have today, whatever that amount is. It is an account that you own and you are in control of your finances. Hopefully, that account is just the beginning because through the information that is available and the history of the transactions that you are uh, making in this account, the service provider can extend more services to you, can extend, for instance, credit so that you can invest in revenue generating activities so that you can you know, finance your needs. It can extend to providing micro, uh, um, insurance for instance, so you can secure and protect yourself against risk. It can extend to you planning for your future with you know, a pension plans or whatnot. So those are all the things and opportunity that having a financial account enable for you individual. And that applies also to business, being able to have this account access to more capital, able to secure uh, your revenue, being able to provide access to your employees. So, Financial inclusion is broad. At the end of the day, for me and for UNCDF, the United Nations Capital Development Fund, there are several phases of financial inclusion that matter to us. The access piece, being able to offer these financial instruments to as many people as possible, and particularly in our case, focusing on the most vulnerable, the most excluded from formal finance, uh, financial system, the ones in the formal, the informal economy. So they also have uh, access to these instruments that you know some of us might take for granted. Uh, in that sense, the usage piece. And so for these services to be relevant to the customers that we are serving so that the usage is indeed uh, incentivized because this meets the need of the customer. The quality of the service is also very important to us so that uh, if the service that not, does not live up to this expectation, you as a customer have a recourse. So the customer protection framework around you know, offering financial services is also a key aspect of the financial inclusion uh, um, journey. Then the fact that these services are also offered in a regulated environment that helps on the customer protection side, the recourse side, and financial services ha providers have a responsibility because there is a regulatory framework around the offering of the service. And then, in, of course, when I mentioned earlier the different types of financial services, whether it is through the banks and the microfinance institutions with the financial regulator, whether it is through, you know, the mobile money industry, where it's still the financial regulator, but also with the capital regulator. But that regulatory element is also a key factor in it. And last but not least, <laughs> but last but not least, is that uh, all the services that are offered are affordable, accessible, relevant, so that the most excluded have access and can use these services. Then the question people ask, okay, why does it matter? I mean, look around you. I have family. I have my, my grandmother. I always like to take her, her example, my grandmother in the village. Um, and I remember, you know, uh, every time when I was in school, at, at the end of the, the school period, I would go visit her in the village. And I knew exactly where she kept her money. She had these little boxes with a, a locket, you know, and, and then she would put all of her money there and, and literally put it under the mattress. So what happened? So her or anybody in a similar situation to her, God forbid, there is a fire in the house. That money is gone. 
So it matters because there are millions, actually billions of people in the world that are excluded financially. And closer to us, just look around us, we have family. So it does matter because having access to this financial instrument helps secure you know, the assets that we have. And like I said earlier, with having the financial exclusion, my grandmother, her options in having access to credit was going to ask her friend, family, or there was a big store in the village. That's where she usually went and, 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 and asked for you know, a loan when times were hard, well, it was difficult times. And also she was part of a, a, a Roska, so a savings group with other women, but she had to wait her turn to get the money. Here again, having a financial instrument and having these transactions and the savings she has on the instrument, she could have had access to a loan with the microfinance institution. She could have had access to a digital loan if it was today, the time that we're talking about. So that is why it matters. It makes these options available in real time and larger set of options to customers to have um, access to more revenue, to secure the revenue, and also have access to services that are not as, you know, uh, um, uh, available in the rural areas in like insurance and like you know planning for your future so that's why it matters to me and what has changed with digital for me digital has transcended the barriers of bricks and mortar I mean you remember in the past if you wanted to, to, to go to the bank and I've started my career in a bank I remember in 1997 in Burkina Faso I started working as a financial analyst for EcoBank people left the business came to the bank, lined up for a couple hours, did the business and went back home. Opportunity loss, it means a couple hours that you take out of your business to go do a financial transaction. Digital has transcended that because today you and I can sit, look at our computer and do our online banking, take our phone and do our mobile banking, have access on our financial account, be able to deposit in the money at an Asian location, which is really close to your house. And then with your phone, manage the transactions, send money, receive, uh, um, put money into your savings, ask for a digital loan. So this is what enabled. Yet, it doesn't mean that all is pink and rosy and everybody has access. That's not the truth. The reality is there are still market failures. There are still some uh, major constraints in enhancing financial inclusion and making sure that we are not leaving no one behind. At the United Capital Development Fund, UNCDF, our strategy is really to promote inclusive digital economies that leave no one behind. And when we, while we look at this strategy, we focus on four key work streams, really for us to help frame the interventions that we have and those start with the customer so understanding better the vulnerable the excluded the rural uh, population the women the ones that are not uh, right now in the formal financial sector understanding their need and making sure that the services that we're providing are relevant to them so what does that mean make sure that they have the right information make sure that they have they can use these services so financial education is really key for us and uh, working with uh, different partners, for instance, the European Union, we've been able to work in several countries in building um, financial education platforms on mobile phone to help educate uh, a population on financial services and how to use these new uh, digital services. So understanding also that infrastructure is a barrier and we need to address those. You know, if you are excluded from the grid, and when I say grid, again, it's mobile connectivity grid, electricity grid, uh, agent network uh, distribution around your area, you are also excluded from this uh, digital finance. So the infrastructure piece is very important mm -hmm. and what we can do in making you know, available or universal access to digital infrastructure is a key way for us to make sure that we don't leave anyone behind. The regulatory environment is also critical in you know, incubating innovation and enabling digital solutions to come and play and complement traditional financial services to be able to serve the most vulnerable one. And, and last and not least, when coming to the innovation piece, this is why we are here. There's so much that digital can do. There's so much that the innovation ecosystem can bring in. There's so much that fintechs can add to the discussion and complement banks, microfinance, uh, and other financial services so that we can bring all of these services in the palm of the customer, uh, in the phone, close the, sort of, you know, the shop in the village, because that's why it matters. We transcend bricks and mortar 
and make available services that are relevant and can help uh, population and businesses uh, contribute to the economy, you know, lift themselves out of uh, poverty for the most vulnerable one and uh, contribute to the, 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 the ecosystem that's out there. And if, if, if COVID pandemic had shown us anything, is that our ability to do business digitally and, and, and bring solutions digitally is really key, especially when we find ourselves in periods of crisis, we have to confine ourselves. So hopefully, um, this gives you a, a nutshell of why for me financial inclusion is important mm -hmm. and the role that uh, innovation can play and fintechs can play. When I look at the Ghana ecosystem and the work that we UNCDF are doing with the green program with the European uh, Union, uh, some of the innovations that we've already had in the market is targeted to crowdfunding, leveraging crowdfunding as a platform for access to finance to entrepreneur, uh, small businesses. This is an innovation that, you know, really talks at the core of uh, what we're doing is enable people to uh, have revenue generating activities, enable MSMEs and entrepreneurs to continue having uh, uh, access to finance and, and, and offering their services. So I'm really proud to be here and, and in this discussion and I look forward to contribute to the rest of the journey with you and the Africa uh, Digital Festival. Thank you very much, Foster. Back to you.